Good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I make these Tunisian crochet honeycomb join as you go blocks that I'm busy making a blanket with. Um, you can make anything you like with this method. Um, anything from scarves to blankets to cushion covers, whatever you need a square for. Um, I was looking around for an idea to use the honeycomb stitch for a scrappy project and I couldn't find anything so I made up my own. So in this tutorial I will also be sharing some tips and tricks on how to uh, make the blocks, how to ensure that you will have enough yarn because this is more of a recipe style tutorial than an actual um, pattern. Um, so for this tutorial I am using double knit yarns and I'm using a 5mm hook for my double knit yarns. I do, um, you can use any hook you like, a long one like this, or you can also use one with a cord like this, whatever you have on hand. Um, you can of course use some fingering weight yarns if you like. Just remember in Tunisian crochet we always use a hook size one or two sizes bigger than recommended for your yarn. So for this method you will start in this left hand corner and work your way to the right and up. So this is block number one which we are going to make first. And then I will add block number two on this side. And I like to add all the blocks to the side for the exact width that I want my blanket. And then I start going up and fill in. I like to do it like that because then I know that all of my little V's here where I joined my blocks will all lay in the same direction. Um, you can of course do it as you please. And as I said, this is just a recipe style tutorial where you can use whatever yarns you like. And I give tips on knowing how much yarn you need for all the blocks so that you don't run out in the middle of one of your blocks. So this is a very nice scrappy project and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Let's proceed. So I'm working 16 stitches. I've already done my foundation chain and foundation row. If you're not sure how to proceed, I will link a tutorial up here for you on how to do that. You can of course make as many stitches as you want for your first block. Okay, so let's continue. So I'm going to make a honeycomb block which means I am doing one Tunisian pearl stitch and one Tunisian simple stitch and alternate until the end of the row. If you're um, not familiar with the stitches, I do have tutorials on those on the channel and I will also link them up here for you. So we are just going to make Tunisian pearl stitch, Tunisian simple stitch until we reach the end of the row. For all 16 stitches. Right, so the last stitch here is a simple stitch and we are just going to end the row off as we normally do and then do a return pass.
me take you out of it. Okay. And then to finish the honeycomb, um, to continue the honeycomb, we are going to make a Tunisian simple stitch on top of a Tunisian pearl stitch and the other way around a Tunisian pearl stitch on top of a Tunisian simple stitch. You can see where the little bumps is of the Tunisian pearl stitch and then the Tunisian simple stitch just looks like two um, vertical lines. So on top of this one we are going to make a Tunisian simple stitch and then a Tunisian pearl stitch and a simple stitch pearl stitch Simple stitch, full stitch until we reach the end of the row. And then we end it off as we did previously and do our return pass. Okay, now because we are not working with an exact pattern, um, you would have to see how many of these rows gives you a square. So I'm going to continue with this until I have a square and then I'll be back and we will continue the tutorial. Okay, so it seems that for me to get a square, I need for my hook size and my yarn and gauge, I need 13 rows. To make sure you have a square, just hold your little block like that. I know it's not completely on the end, but we are going to still finish off this row and then it'll be perfectly square. So to make sure how many rows you have, you can just use this technique by counting the little V's here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So um, please remember to make note of how many rows you need to get your square and how many and how many stitches you cast on because you are going to need that to complete your project. So we are just going to bind off this block in pattern. So to do that, our previous stitch was a Tunisian simple stitch. So we are going to do a Tunisian pearl stitch. But instead of picking up the loop, we are just going to pull it through both. So you see this last um, row doesn't really make the same height of row as the normal ones do. And then we're going to make a simple stitch and we're just going to pull it through and a full stitch and pull it through both and we're just going to continue with this until we finished off our little block block number one
Now I will recommend that you do not work away your ends in the beginning of this project because this will help you to determine um, where to attach your attach your next block. Right. So now you've worked block one, and to determine because this is a scrappy project um, recipe, you're gonna need to know how many grams of yarn you need for each block. So depending on whatever yarn you used, um, when you completed your first block, get yourself a scale, kitchen scale, whatever scale you'd like to use, and then weigh your block with its ends attached. I need 4 grams for each block. So to be on the safe side, oh there it goes up to 5, I just wanted to say to be on the safe side, just add one more gram. So I'm going to make sure before I start my next block that I have five grams of the yarn that I want to use. So let's see how much is this. This is 11 gram. Plenty of yarn. So for this um, to blanket, we are going to add blocks to the side on the right hand side. Just as you would read from this side. Um, when you make a corner to corner join as you go blanket, you usually start in the bottom corner and work your way up like that. But for this blanket, we are not going to do that. We are going to start here in the corner. As I said, we're starting in the left hand corner and we work our way to the right until you reach the desired length or not length the desired width that you want your blanket to be i like to add a progress keeper to my first block just so when i pick it up when i made a few blocks i can Always remember which one was block number one. Okay. So to do block the second block on the right hand side, let me just get some yarn here. Yeah. We are now going to work in this sixteenth stitch here. So if you count these, it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16. We're going to work into this stitch. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a battle to get your hook in there. Just get it in and wiggle it a bit. Okay. We need to put our hook from the front to the back let's just make a slip knot there we go <laughs> all right so with your hook now from the front to the back through this 16th stitch we are going to pull this slip knot don't pull it too tight but we are going to pull it through this stitch so that the knot stays at the back of your slip knot. So that is your first stitch. And then we are going to chain 16 or the amount of stitches that you used for your first block. For me, it's 16, so I'm going to do 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, now we are going to pick up our foundation row.
Okay, so we've got our 16 stitches. And now we need to attach we need to attach these stitches to this block. So what I do is I put my hook through the next stitch and I make a like a slip stitch which I then pull through my first stitch for my return pass. So I just instead of making a chain stitch to get to the correct height to do the return pass, I just skip both of the first both of the two first steps. I put the hook through the next V stitch on the side, yarn over and pull it through the first loop on your hook and then continue with your return pass. You can see there the first foundation row is done for this second block and then we are just going to do exactly the same, same stitch pattern here as we did here. So we are going to start with a Tunisian full stitch. Oops, don't split the yarn. So I'll just continue in the stitch pattern. Um, as we did before so the last stitch here I will make a Tunisian full stitch and then we've got 16 stitches on the hook and do exactly the same I put my hook through yarn over pull it through that one and pull it through my first loop on the hook and I continue with my return pass and we just continue in this manner until we did the same amount of rows as we did for this first block. So in my case that is 13. So I'm going to finish to the last bind off row and I'll be back. So I've made my 13 rows. You can see here 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 13. And I have attached them to block number 1. So to bind off this block, block number two, we are going to do exactly the same as we did for block number one. And bind off in pattern. Oops. And we're just going to slip it in that in that last stitch there at the top. 
and cut your yarn. And just work it off like that. That little bump won't be very noticeable when you get to it in the end. Because we are going to work work over that at the end of the day. Okay, so that is block one and block two complete. Um, the reason why I like to mark the first block is because I like all my blocks to be on this side, added on this side, so that these little, um, I'll call them beads like this, all lay in this direction. Because if you are now coming back and you add your block, on this side so for instance you did that and you add to this side then those v's is gonna lie on this side and then they'll be all over the place and i like mine to lay all in the same direction as you can see here in this one that i started before i added all my blocks on the right hand side and all my v's of my new colors is lying in this direction okay so i'm going to show you how to add your block on top here i just switched tunisian hooks because i kept banging it against everything on my table so when we do the second block we are going to put our hook through the corner stitch there And then we're going to pull that one through the stitch there and we are going to pick up all the stitches from this top corner onto our hook just like we would do a foundation row but instead of picking up through the back bars on the foundation chain we pick them up here in the top of our block here you can see it is very important to not make your stitches at the top too tight or you will really battle to pick up the stitches for your next block Okay, so how many do we have? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. We still need 2. So that's the one through there. And then the one on the side. A little bit more difficult to see here. Yeah? We need to pick up those two bars. That's one. Oops. Second one needs to go in between those two strands. That's it. Put this little piece back and pick it up. And there we've picked up all 16. 12, 14, 16. Okay. So we've got 16 stitches and we just continue in the same manner doing our return pass with one chain and then yarn over, pull through two. All the way to the front. Okay. If you see your little slip knot jumping through to the front, don't worry about that. Just pull it back. When we work this tail away, it will be out of the way and you won't see it. 
Right, so now we continue in our honeycomb stitch pattern, which is yarn to the front, hook through the vertical bar, yarn over, pull it through, Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian pearl stitch, simple stitch, pearl stitch. Okay, and then we continue just in this manner building the block until you have the same amount of rows as you did for your previous blocks. In my case, it is 13 rows. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back so that we can bind off this block together. So I have done my 13 rows. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. And we will bind off this block exactly the same as all of the others in pattern so that will be a pull stitch and pull it through both just like that right. and we do this last stitch as all of the others put your hook through yarn over bring it up yarn over and pull through both loops and then make just a chain that just makes it a bit easier to work into it again. Then leave, leave a tail and cut your tail. And then you can just pull that one through. And you have completed your third block. Right, so to do this block, we are going to use the same techniques that we used to add this block on top here and how we add it onto the side. So we are once again going to put our hook through the very first stitch there. And we'll make a slip knot. And pull it tight, not too tight, but tight enough. And then Pull it through so that you have your first loop on the hook. And then just pick up all 16 stitches in this block too. From this block. Alright, so now we should have 15, or 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. So our last stitch, if you take that yarn, that tail, and you pull it up, you'll see that there is a little gap there. That is your last V stitch. Now if you can see it there, it's lying like that. So then you put your hook through that little hole. Pick up your 16th stitch, keep this yarn at the back, and then we are going to put our hook through the block on the left, and you're going to just grab that yarn through there and 
pull it through the first loop on your hook and then just do your normal return pass When this happens, you can just pull on this tile, pull that little knot to the back. Right, so we've now done our first uh, return pass, and we're going to just keep working in the same honeycomb pattern, which is your first stitch should be a Tunisian pearl stitch, as you would know by now. Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian pearl stitch, Tunisian simple stitch. And continue until we reached the end of the row. Right, and then we are using the same method as we did down here. You put your hook through the hole in the block to the left, yarn over, pull it through, and pull it through the first loop on your hook, and return pass. Okay, so that is what we are going to do for this block. This block you will also work the same amount of rows as you did for all of the other blocks, which in my case is 13 rows. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be back. I've worked the uh, 13 rows again for this block and we will be binding it off in the same manner as we did all of the others. Let me just show you once more. Remember not to pull too tight on your stitches. Right. Doesn't this look just gorgeous so far? I really love this stitch because it always lies flat. Now, what did I do now? Made a mistake. Whoops. This should be a Tunisian simple stitch. And then this one would be a. Tunisian pull stitch and when you get to this point you'd simply take your hook put it through the top yarn there yarn over and pull it through both and then just to secure it nicely I like to make a chain stitch before I um, before I cut the yarn And you can make this decision when you add your other blocks. If you don't like this extra chain stitch, you can do something else. But I find that it doesn't really bother me. Because if I work in this space, and I work in that space, that is hidden. You don't really see that. Okay, so that is the basics of how to do this technique. Um, you can now work your rest of your blocks to the side and fill up your blanket to be as big as you like now because we have now done quite a few uh, four blocks i'll show you how i weave in the ends you'll be able now to tell 
which was your first block leave your progress keeper in there but because you now have two sets on top of each other you'll easily be able to see um, on which side to add your blocks which is on this right side so let's weave in these ends Just take a wool needle and you see here we made this slip knot. Make sure that your slip knot is at the back and just weave in your yarn. I like to do it up here and I like to go underneath the same strand again just to secure it so that it doesn't unravel I like to hide it in here And then because I'm using acrylics here, I'll just snip this off because you can just give it a little pull and snip it off. Because it is acrylic, it's not going to grow and really settle into place um, like normal wools would. But you can just snip that off. And let's do the same here. Here we now don't have a side to to um, hide it in so just make sure that when you do this one that you don't close this um, the stitch too tightly because if you want to work a border around your blanket or whatever project you're making you don't want this stitch to be very tight so just work it in I usually do that and then this one I just hide them in this little back bars. I'll do a few, make sure that I don't pull too tight, and go back through that one again. Let me show you how I work away this one with a little knot. I just take this yarn and I go t over to the blue. So I will just go over to the blue so that I pull this one so that it doesn't go back and show on this side. So I pull on that blue and I like to, as I said, go a few stitches in here and then I like to go in this one again. In this one again. And I'll do that and do it again. So that I know it is not going to pull out. And you cannot see it on the front. And as I said, because it's acrylic yarn, I will just snip this one off because it's not going to to bloom or anything. And that is how I work away the ends for these little blocks. The moment you are more comfortable with adding your new block I want to show you a method to work over the tail of your new yarn so that you don't have this extra tail to work in as well as the one that you can have at the top. So you can do the um, grabbing your yarn over the tail and under the tail for the second um, stitch but I feel that this method is a little bit more secure. It feels a bit more secure to me. So I'm going to show you what I do. So there's your tail. Put your hook through your stitch. Make sure that the tail is underneath the hook. And grab your yarn. And pull it through. 
So now, I'm going to take the tail, bring it over your working yarn again, to the bottom, hook through, yarn over, pull up a loop. Tail over your working yarn, hook through, yarn over, pull up a loop. And just keep basically twisting the tail around your working yarn. until you reach the end of the row and just pick up the stitch through that. give this a little tug but it is more to me it's more secure than just working over over this end on top and underneath it's got that little bit of a twisty effect so it's not completely loose in this in this block and that means one less end for every block that you make i think that's a big bonus And there you have it. That is my tutorial on the scrappy honeycomb Tunisian crochet blocks. Um, you can make anything with these blocks, anything at all, from a scarf to pillowcases to a blanket, whatever you like, and where you can fit in these blocks. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of my content. And push the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy crafting!